Hello, welcome to Learn Python with Fun Projects Lesson 5, Word Shuffle. Today we are going to learn a lot of things. Uh, first we are going to learn about functions and then pig Latin. Uh, we are going to make a slow print function. Then we are going to learn about dictionaries. Python dictionaries are something that's like a list but better. And then uh, writing and reading files from Python. And the last project today will be Word Shuffle. Now, uh, we've learned a lot so far. Uh, this is all the things that we've learned so far. Uh, take a good look at these topics. And if you are not sure of some of these, please uh, go back and try to learn them or read about these things by uh, searching it up online. Um, now, among these, the most important two topics are the if then, uh, if l if else, and the other one is while loop or the for loop. Loops and if thens are actually the hardest part of programming. In fact, for loop was something that uh, took me one month to understand when I first learned programming languages. So, uh, if you have trouble with these, don't be too discouraged. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort until you fully grasp these two concepts. Um, of course, you can just proceed to today's lesson and see how I use them and maybe get a better idea from that. Uh, but if you still have trouble uh, with learning loops and if then, then uh, try to see if uh, other videos out there could be helpful as well. And of course, uh, if you find a nice video on loops and if then please uh, put a reply uh, put comments on this video and uh, I'll really appreciate it okay all right so let's move on the first topic is functions now we've been using functions before like int string dir these are the, the uh, all these uh, commands with parentheses and you can put something inside the parentheses right uh, these are what we call functions uh, but you can make your own function as well. Uh, so here's an, the general structure of a function. You should always start by df to make a function and you have to give a function name and decide what parameters to pass to that function and then uh, things that you have to put inside, like things that you want to do with the parameters, it goes in here and then after calculating, uh, you can return something. Or instead of returning something to, uh, to the, the original caller, you can just decide to print something on the screen as well. OK, and then uh, the unindented code will be outside the function. Just like for loops, when you have unindented part that's outside the for loop, and also if, else as well, right? OK. so. Um, I guess it's better to share an example. Uh, here's a quick example. Uh, don't try to type this, rather try to see what I'm doing with this. So let's say you have like, uh, there's some guy selling hot dogs and burgers and every time some customer comes up with like, give me five hot dogs and two burgers. Uh, he has to compute that and it's not so easy. So he wishes there should be some function to easily calculate that. Well. Uh, you can help that guy by making this uh, the price function where it gets the number of hot dogs and burgers and it cre creates it calculates the, the price of it uh, by two dollars per hot dogs and five dollars for burgers and returns the P now if you run this program it doesn't do anything because all it did was we define this function but uh, now that we've taught Python what a price function is, I can call that function. I can call it and say, okay, if I have six hot dogs and 10 burgers, how much should I be paying? It says $62, right? Okay, so that's how uh, this thing would work. Uh, because this definition of the function requires two inputs, if you just put, I just want hot dog, five hot dogs, it's going to complain. It says uh, it's missing one required positional argument of burgers, right? 
So what you need to do is uh, if you really just want hot five hot dogs and no burgers, you really have to say five comma zero in compliance with how the function should be called. And uh, you can also put variables in it. Say A is, is five and B is seven. Then you can also do price of A comma B and it gives you the value, the price of five hot dogs and seven burgers. All right, so hopefully this uh, gave you some idea of what a function does. Now you could, instead of returning, uh, you can print P, right? Um, let's see. If, if you do this, it seems to do exactly what it did before, but the difference is when you assign the price of 5 comma 6 and you ask for A, A doesn't have anything because it did not return anything, whereas the 40 was printed directly to the screen. Uh, on the other hand, if I put return P, what it does is uh, it doesn't put the value directly on the screen, but it returns the value to the console. So if I do A equals to price 5 comma 6, then nothing happens because the value that this price function returned is now stored into A. And if you put A there, it gives you 40. OK. Uh, usually, you don't you, you want the function to return something so uh, if the two distinction of printing to the screen and returning was not so clear here don't worry too much about it uh, you're going to uh, understand it later okay but all you have to know is that uh, functions always start with DEF to define a function you have to put DEF function name the parameters you want to pass and then, uh, although you don't have to return, uh, usually you want to return something. That's what a function is. OK, uh, now let's do something easier for the function. So here's a, a easy example, function example of greeting somebody. So uh, define greet of a name. And greetings is hello of that person and return greetings. So this I want you to actually follow me to see if this works. So let's try to remember how to define a function. Uh, what do you start with? It's uh, DEF, right? DEF. And then we have to give the function a name, let's say greet. And then the parameter that it should, uh, the, the input for the function should be the name. It receives the name. And then it should create the greetings for that person which is simply hello space plus name. So if I pass on the, the name as Daniel, then it will say hello Daniel. Right? And then it's going to return the greetings, and that's it. Okay. So here's a simple function. Let's run it. Nothing happens again because I didn't do anything with it. But if I to greet of Daniel, it says hello Daniel, right? Okay, uh, now we can actually make this program to use the greet function, which is uh, say uh, x is the name, so input what is your name, and then you can print the greetings or, or greet of x right, which is the greetings that's generated by this function right so we can run this and it now asks for what is your name daniel and it gives you hello daniel right. now you might say this is uh, too complicated uh, there's an easier way to write this say instead of uh, using this function you can just say well put hello space plus
plus uh, x, right? And then you can just delete all of this. And just these two lines should be enough to achieve exactly what we have. So it, it works exactly the same, right? So why, uh, you might ask, why are we using so many lines to achieve the same thing, right? This is much more complicated. Well, uh, you're going to see later when we do the project today that uh, uh, functions make it easier by uh, first chopping up the big problem, big task into small tasks. And also, if you end up using uh, something over and over again, then it's easier to make a function. So uh, those are the, the reasons. Okay, So you're going to see functions in action when we make today's uh, big project, the word, uh, word shuffle, right? OK. Uh, now let's go back. Let's do something fun. Pig Latin. Okay. So what's a pig Latin? Uh, it makes any word sound like a Latin word by moving the first letter to the end and add a. So for example, I have I like to eat pork. I just one letter, so moving the first to the last doesn't do anything. But then I put a at the end. Uh, I think like demonstrates what we're doing better. So what I do is take the L, move it to the end, so I get ikel, and then I put A at the end, so you get ikali, right? So two will be ote, eat will be ate, pork will be orkpe. So it's like ae, ikali, ote, ehe, orkpe. And some people use this to uh, pass on secret message, like uh, this pig probably doesn't like to hear that I like to he eat pork, right? Uh, but if I say in pig Latin like this, he doesn't understand what I'm saying, so he's okay with it, right? So that's that's how uh, pig Latin works. And in fact, this, this is not something I made up, it's an actual thing. So uh, here in Wikipedia, you, s you can see the pig Latin entry, and it has a very old history I think it goes back to 1919 Columbia Records uh, something like that right so it, it's very old and uh, as you can see uh, you put the P at the end and then you have a pay you put a a a y at the end now it's actually more complicated when you have constant clusters like at smile ls me but this is too much for us, so we are not going to implement this. But we're just going to implement this. Okay. All right. So how do we implement Pig Latin? Well, let's demonstrate this by saying word is equal to say like. Okay. And uh, we learned how to take the slices of a word. So for example, if I say word of one colon then it skips the first letter and it shows the less re the, the rest of the letter right so Ike it skipped the first letter and I gave you the it g gives us the Ike whereas if I do word of zero that's the first letter right and what we want to do is we can do word of one colon and then plus word of zero and then put plus a y and uh, it took this Ike and then L, put them together, concatenated it, and I get Ikel, and then it puts AY, so it's Ikel A. Okay, so if you understood this idea, then you can easily see how I managed to write that as a function. So here is the function for pig Latinizing a word. So we're going to give the name pig word, word. The first letter is word zero, the other letters is word one and colon. And the pig Latin of the word would be other letters. So the, the rest of the letters comes first, and the first letter goes end to the end, and then we put a y at the end. Okay. And then we return this pig Latin. Okay, so let's see if we can actually implement that here. 
See if you can remember. So what do we do? We do def and then the name of the function. We're going to call it pig word of a given word. Colon. And what we want to do is first get the first letter. Would be the word of zero. And other letters, which is everything after one, everything after the first letter is you one colon. And the pig Latin of the given word would be uh, first letter, actually other letters first, other letters plus first letter plus a y and then we return pig latin okay now let's see this in action nothing happens because all we did was make this function but let's use the function let's see if it correctly does the like as we had before a cali yeah exactly uh, pig word of say pork or pay. So it seems to work very well. How about just two letters? You know, if you put up arrow, it goes to the last entry that you put, right? Uh, and then delete. And then let's put T O O T. So that is correct. Okay, so you can see that uh, in fact uh, we made each word into the pig latin by using this but what about sentences if i put sentences this is not going to do what we want it to do so like like, uh, uh, like pork unfortunately it's not going to give you a cale orc pay uh, it's just going to take the l and move it to the end and put a that's not what we want. We want pig Latinizing each of these words, right? So let's think about that. How do we uh, pig Latinize every word in a sentence? Well, to do that, let's first think about the sentence, I like uh, to eat pork. Okay. Um, we want to send each of these words, we have five words, right? Each of these words should be sent in, sent to a pig word separately. So I need to separate this into five words. How do we do that? Well, there's a nice command called split. And we can split this by spaces. So if I do s that split of space, then it split the sentence into many words five words right and uh, now we can take that as L equals to s dot split or maybe we can name it as words words equals s dot split of this right and we can say for W in words for each word we can print pig word of the word right uh, so I'm using the for loop to go through this list remember the words will be this list right and for each of the words W will take that value so first W will be I and then pig word of the I will be printed then W will be like and the pig word of the like will be printed so W will become I and then like and two and eat pork one by one because the for loop when you do for something in a list this becomes each element in the list and it executes this multiple times that's what loops are right loops they execute the same thing over and over again but sometimes you want some conditions changed and uh, W will become these separate things Okay, so let's run this and see what it does. It it does give you IA, Ekale, Ote, or Pay. 
so perfect. Well, not so perfect. You probably want to print everything on a single line. Uh, the problem is that when you print, every time the Python prints something, uh, it executes new line. Uh, but if you don't want to have a new line, then you can also um, disable that. Okay, so here's a here's another way to do the same thing. But uh, I want everything to be in a single line. So what we want to do is for doubling words, and I'm going to print pig word. But there's a difference uh, instead of end being the backslash n character this will be the the usual thing uh, backslash n means new line uh, instead of the new line we're going to put nothing uh, actually there's a space so that if you execute this it gives you uh, ea uh, ikali ote ete or uh, just like what we had in the slide right so that's one way to do it um, however there's another simpler way rather than using loops you can also do the join command so if you want say words is these right if you want to join all of these different words to form a single sentence uh, you do space empty str string with one space so there is actually a space between the two two quotes okay and then I do join of words. Then it gives you a single, single thing. Okay. I like to eat pork, just like that. Uh, now, if you're curious to know why, what this space does is uh, space is what connects these things. So, if I, if I put uh, something like question mark. And join words then instead of the space between them it gives you question marks okay so that's how the join works all right so uh, now let's use this to build uh, pig latinizing of a sentence and here's my take to pig latinize a sentence what I want to do is define pig sentence of sentence and just I said just as I said before what you want to do is words is equal to sentence that split of the space and then uh, what I do is uh, L equals to for words and words L dot append pig word word so now it's a new list containing the pig Latinized word for each of them and then return uh, this with join okay so this is how you do the pig latinizing a sentence uh, yeah I think I just realized that I forgot to explain to you what this does uh, so it's like what we do is L is equal to empty string and then for W in words uh, what I want to do is L dot append pig word of the W and if I do that and ask what L is now you can see that the pig latinized things are put in here and only after that we're going to join L okay all right so that's the idea let's let's uh, now implement that as a function so define uh, pig sentence okay, of a sentence. On the slide, I put a sentence as uh, I spelled everything, but let's just say s. Okay. Then the words are s dot split empty spaces, and now I have to make a new list. So I'm going to start with an empty list and what I want to do is for W in words for each letter in the words I'm going to append
append to the new list all the pig Latinized word so that the end result is now I have something like this, okay? And then uh, what you want to do is just return the space with join of L and that gives you the pig Latinization of a sentence, okay? All right, so uh, let's actually get to use this. So uh, here's the simple thing. Uh, S equals to input, uh, enter sentence to pig Latinize. Okay, so I put that, and that makes uh, a new sentence to be whatever you input. Let's put a colon there so that it doesn't confuse itself. Okay. And then what you can do is print uh, pig sentence of s. Okay. And now we have a perfect pig Latin translator. Okay. So let's run it. Enter sentence to pig Latinize. Uh, let's see, uh, home, sweet, home. And it's uh, ome would say ome. Okay, so hopefully that was fun. Uh, try to put in other sentences to have fun with this. Okay, we have so much to do, uh, so let's move on. Uh, now, one function that we are going to use a lot will be the slow print function. Uh, so what we're going to do is instead of printing something all at once, we're going to make it print slowly one by one by one, one letter by one letter. And it's often pretty interesting when you have to read the screen. Uh, rather than having everything show up at once, having it to slowly appear on the screen might make it more interesting, okay? So let's, let me show you how this is done. Um, if you want, you can save this to a new, new file, but I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to do define slow print of x. And what I want to do is, oh, before that I need something need to import time okay so um, import time gives us a time that sleep which makes Python uh, don't do anything for a very small amount of time okay so uh, define slow print X and what I want to do is for each letter in X I'm going to print the L the letter but uh, I'm going to change the end and the flush uh, first I'm going to mute the end so there's no end it doesn't go to a new line and everything afterwards that you print will be printed later right? and then uh, only after that uh, I'm going to put uh, flush equals to true. The reason that you want this is uh, uh, print by default will only print something on the screen when it sees the new line. Uh, but that defeats the purpose because uh, then even if I print something, if I want to print something letter by letter, it's not going to show up on the screen and then uh, only when you print something uh, later it's going to show up all at once. Okay, uh, If you don't understand what I just said, uh, it's it's nice to do, try to do this without the flush equals to true. If you delete this and run it, then you see, you'll see the difference. Okay, all right, but anyways, uh, this is what I want to do and then uh, after everything is printed, I would like to, oh, and then I want to do time.sleep and you can put bigger numbers if you want to appear even more slowly, uh, but I'll, I think after experimenting with a lot of numbers, I think 0 0.2 is a good number. 
Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then we are going to print something, uh, print nothing. But what it does is this creates a new line. Okay, And that's it. That's the soul print. So let's see. If I run it, it doesn't do anything. But now let's say slow print uh, a long, long time ago. And see, it doesn't print all at once. It prints slowly, right? And uh, you can go back and change those uh, programs that we did, like choose your own story, uh, the second lesson. Uh, if you change all the print statements into slow print with uh, some various variation of this one with maybe possibly smaller time.sleep, uh, then uh, you might find it more enjoyable because uh, the it, it doesn't uh, everything doesn't appear all at once but it appears slowly okay so that's that's a nice thing to do okay all right um, now before we do today's topic uh, here's before we do today's project, here's an important one, dictionaries. Uh, so what, what are dictionaries? It's like lists, but uh, sometimes it's hard to keep track of the numerical index of a list, right? So let's say you have uh, employee data, and his name's Tom, his age is 34, his job is secretary. Uh, but then when you want to retrieve each information from the employee then you have to remember that zero is the name one is the age and two is the job which is not so convenient when you have a lot of other things and when you're trying to make a very complicated program and this is where the dictionaries are useful you can instead write employee name as Tom age is 34 job as secretary and Notice that for the dictionaries, we use curly braces, right? Instead of the uh, brackets that we use for lists, okay? And once you have that, you can do employee of name and get time, employee of age to get 34, and so on and so on, okay? Uh, here, these things are called the keys, and the values are Tom, 34, secretary, okay? So let me demonstrate to you how that works. So suppose you have employee equals to curly brace for the dictionary, okay? And then we're going to say the name would be Tom, and then comma, I want the age to be 34. And 34, I want this to be a numerical value, so I'm not going to put quotes around it. And then job would be secretary okay and that's it now if I put employee of name it says Tom and if I ask for the age it says 34 and the name age job are what we call keys Tom 34 and secretary those are values okay hopefully that made sense it's not too hard right um, now what's not so easy is how to uh, how to loop over an employee so for example if I do for e in employee and print print e it only gives you the keys name age and job okay so uh, if I want to say name is time and age is 34 and job is secretary then uh, here's a nice format to use uh, you can do for key and then values in employee and you can convert the dictionary into uh, lists of 
lists uh, by putting as item. Okay. Then print key comma value. Okay, and you can see that uh, name is Tom, age is 34, job is secretary. So what, what happened is that if you do employee.items, uh, it gives you pairs uh, of key and value pairs, key and value, key and value, and it gives you as if it's a, like a list. So uh, for key value in employee.items, what happens is that key becomes the first item value becomes the second item of each item so uh, and then it loops over this entire list by one two and then three and that's how it gives you name is Tom age is 34 job is secretary so these are the things that we can do uh, with dictionaries okay and we'll certainly be using this in our project today. Okay, uh, now there's still another thing before we do the project. Uh, bear with me. This uh, reading and writing files in Python, that's the last thing we're going to do. And then we're going to start writing the project, okay? So reading and writing files in Python. And, uh, you know, this appears often enough that uh, you should just try to remember the entire four lines okay uh, the most important part is this one so what we do is with open and then you have to put the file name and R is for reading mode as F and what we do is for each line in the file that we opened uh, lines that append line will just put lines uh, into the lines list uh, the each line of this file the text file will go into the lines okay, so it's going to go one by one by one right um, how about writing files uh, to write files uh, you have two ways uh, suppose you're trying to put apple is my favorite fruit and but I eat bananas more as two lines and uh, what you can do is uh, with open file one dot text and now we're going to put W because we're trying to write a file and then file one dot text W is F and if you do F dot write lines line everything in this list will be each line of the text file okay? and it's going to create a text file uh, on the other hand uh, you can just uh, just write a single string into F just like this uh, story I was broke and I won the lottery the end so this is a very short story and then if you with open file to that text WSF and if you do F dot write of the story it's going to create this as the story okay and once again uh, I really want you to memorize these things uh, but if you are memorizing it, please pay attention to this syntax. This is the most important one, right? With open file name, either W for writing or R for reading, as F, and then you write lines, okay? All right, so let me show you a demonstration of that. Uh, for example, if I say... Um, L equals to uh, oh happy day uh, I love life something like that and then with open and then we're going to call this diary txt and we're going to open it for writing as F and then we're going to do F dot if you have a list and you want, want each item in the list as lines we do write lines of 
L, then enter, and nothing happened because uh, we just wrote new stuff, right? Uh, we, we just made this diary.txt. Okay, well, uh, actually, there's a way for us to see what happened, and the way we can see what happened is by looking at files so uh, if you it's a bit hard to see but here the files right if you click files and then this appears and here main.py is this file we can see the diary text was created and if you click diary uh, oh oh uh, so, oh happy day I love li life is put in there and uh, unfortunately the, the right lines doesn't give you the new line so we should do something different. So what I want to do is I want to put uh, backslash n for the new line. backslash n for the new line okay ah just that l equals to o happy day backslash n then i love life and then backslash n those give you backslash n gives you a new line and then let's just do the exact same thing as before. So with open diary text, uh, as I said before, up arrow just recalls everything that you've typed before. So that's how I got that. And then f dot right lines l. Okay, and then enter. And what happened was that this text file is overwritten by the new one. And as you can see, we have two two lines oh happy day and I love life okay so that's created now if you want to actually read this so we're going to read the diary uh, for open diary dot txt you know let's control L deletes everything so control L okay and let's do it over with open diary no, in quotes diary.txt and for reading as f and then space space for l in f so it's I'm going to read each line in the file and I'm, I just want to print it okay, print the line now because I have a for loop I need another indentation so I actually had uh, there are two spaces in here, and here I have four spaces. Although it's hard to uh, hardly visible, this is two two space bars, and this is four space bars. If I enter, uh, it gives you it prints "Oh Happy Day" and then "I Love Life." And there's extra lines here because it contains backslash n, so uh, it has extra lines that way. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, and if this is okay now we are going to start with our word scrabble word shuffle, word shuffle. okay so what is today's project this is word shuffle uh, this program will present you a shuffled word along with its meaning and uh, so this this word this compub discombobulate is going to be shuffled as uh, domite something and then when you're presented with this and it's also give, going to give you the meaning of this word and then from that you have to guess what the uh, in initial word is uh, by the way discombobulate means uh, confusing okay so it's going to be very confusing right okay so we're going to make that now, uh, in order for this to work, 
you actually need some data files and because it's hard to prepare the, the word in the dictionary I actually uh, used my website to uh, prepare the, the, the text files for you so what I want you to do is go to my website which is 100 worksheets.com and then you put slash coding so that's the uh, website 100 worksheets.com 100 is numbers and slash coding and if you go there uh, you're going to see several files and uh, of them well, we're doing the lesson five right uh, what you want to do is you want to right click and save link as and you want to save it in some places and uh, yeah I'm going to save it as just vocabeasy.txt okay and then you can also do the, the save link as this one okay and then uh, so if you downloaded these files what you want to do is you want to upload them into REPL so here in the REPL I need to upload them and the way you upload them is I like add file click uh, no, that's not how you do it uh, upload file and then you look for the files that you have uh, I think it was in yeah one of the trouble with this is you have to remember where you where you put your files okay I think it's uh, over here I think it was here oh there it is okay vocab easy can I also so you can click control and then click the other one you can upload multiple files this way as well so those go in here okay now uh, some of you might have the <coughs> Mac or some other kind of computer so that this might not be so easy so if you had trouble getting that uh, here's another way to do it so I'm gonna delete this how did I delete this okay I guess there's no way to delete it uh, oh well okay but uh, here, here's what you do um, if you have trouble doing all this then you can you can do everything just in here and just follow these steps okay so what you want to do is first import OS OS means operating system and there's a command where you do os.system and what os.system does is uh, the, the replit site works on Linux and you can actually execute Linux commands uh, with this OS that system uh, if you know what Linux is then you will understand what I mean if you don't uh, you don't have to know uh, all you have to do is just type what I have and there's a Linux command called wget which gets files from online and what you do is you put wget and then you go to that website I told you the hundred worksheets.com and then you go to the file that you want to download right click and what you want to do is copy link address and once you have copied the link address then what you want to do is you can just right click and paste uh, don't press enter yet close the quote and put closing parenthesis and then enter and what it does is it downloads the file uh, because I already have the file here it just renamed it something else but uh, this is what you do okay so you do this and then uh, what you want to do is uh, you go up arrow 
and now the oh, let's see, control L. Uh, it's not working. Just a minute. Um, control L. Now you do the same thing. OS dot system. Quotation W get space and then go to the next file. Vocabulary file hard. Right click, copy link address, and then right click paste, and then quote, and then close the parenthesis, enter, and then oh. Uh, okay, I don't know why this failed, but it should work. Uh, let me just try one more time. Oh, yeah, now it worked. I don't know why it didn't work last time. Maybe the server was overloaded. Okay. But anyways, uh, as you can see, uh, this is how you put the files. Uh, either of the two ways, uh, right now I expect everyone to have vocabeasy.txt and vocab hard dot text in there. If you ended up with some other files, don't worry about it. It's it's okay. All right. So now let's start to play with it. Okay. Uh, main. I'm going to go back to main. So go to files and then go to main. And we are just going to use this one because we will be using slow print okay uh, now but before we do that uh, let's see what's in the vocab easy so for L in no uh, let's open so L equals to empty string and we're going to read so with open vocab easy dot txt and we're going to open it for reading as f and two spaces and then for line in f each of the lines then you do four spaces and then uh, l dot append line enter and what you end up with is when you do L, it has all of these things. Okay. Uh, let's look at just the first element of L0. Okay. Uh, what about L of 1? Okay, great. And what you can see here is that all of the elements in the list now is populated by. Uh, this word with colon and then definitions and if you have multiple definitions they are uh, they are distinguished by this this vertical bar uh, on the keyboard it's right above the backslash so that's how you do it uh, okay so if I want L1 dot split of the colon then you end up with the word and its definition so you can say you can say word comma def definition equals to that and that's how you can fetch the word and its definition. Now, uh, for the definition, I also want it to be split into a list if you have many things. So I want to split the definition again uh, by the vertical line so that you end up with bunch of these uh, definitions split split by each of the definitions right and this is what I'm going to uh, implement okay all right so 
now that I explained what we're doing, hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to do here. Okay. All right, so let's begin. Uh, we are going to start by uh, importing time and also importing random because we're going to shuffle things randomly. Okay, so we're going to import random, and then uh, in the beginning we have to have the the, uh, the list of the vocabulary. So I'm going to say vocab equals to um, empty right? uh, vocab lines will be empty and then with open uh, vocab easy dot txt comma for reading as f and what we want to do is uh, for each line in F, so we're going to read the file line by line, and I'm going to append, uh, well, let's do this first. Uh, I'm going to put the word and the definition split, so each line should be split by the colon. So that word and the definition is given like that, right? And then uh, we're going to say, uh, oh, you know what? I just want this to be vocab, but now I want this to be dictionary, okay? Because it should have the word and the definition in it, okay? So four spaces, and then I'm going to put uh, vocab of the word is now going to be the definition but I want the definition to be split by the vertical bar uh, you know some some keyboards they have like bar bar that's split uh, but it's uh, right below the backspace keyboard if you have trouble finding this one it's right below the backspace keyboard the standard 104 keys keyboard it's right below the backspace all right so you have this and that should give you all the vocabulary right? so let's let's run it and see what it happens uh, we only read the file and we defined this function so nothing happens yet but if you look at the vocab now you see that uh, the vocab has all the uh, definitions in the word. So uh, vocab of the weary is uh, exhaust or get tired, lose interest, and so on and so on. So if you ask what's vocab for the weary, oh, vocab, I forgot to use the square brackets, weary, then it gives you all the definitions of the word weary. Okay. All right, so that's what we need. Uh, we need this to be used, okay? All right, so now we're going to define several functions to play with this. Uh, first, we need the word list. So I'm going to put words. And the words that we're going to use will be all the keys in the vocab, right? So uh, as I said, uh, when you have a dictionary, it's always a key and value pair. Uh, this entire thing is a single list. That's the value and withdraw here is the key. So if I do uh, vocab.keys, It creates the list of words only. So let me show you here. Vocab dot keys. It gives you all the lists, right? Okay, so the words will be vocab dot keys. And uh, uh, maybe. 
Okay, well, so we have the words, and we have to be able to randomly choose, right? So, so let's see what happens here. So, if I do words equal to vocab dot keys, and then uh, import ran, uh, random dot choice of words. Uh, okay. Oh, so we have to change that to list. So sorry about that. Uh, you need words equal to list of vocab dot keys. Then what it does is uh, now you can randomly choose words, random cho choice of words. Then it will give you it will randomly choose a word. Okay. All right. Uh, now. Uh, we should be able to take that word and shuffle it, right? So, uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to shuffle. So, define uh, shuffle x, where x is a word. And I guess I just want this to be word. Okay. So shuffle word, and then uh, how do you shuffle word? So first I want to do L as the uh, list of word, and then uh, for I want to uh, to random dot shuffle. And then return nothing in there but a string, and then, then join the L. Okay. So here, here's what you do. Uh, suppose we have L equals the list of route. Then L becomes each of these letters, right? If I just do empty string dot join of L, then you end up with uh, the same thing. Uh, it just joins back all these letters and, and gives you the word back. But if we take L, uh, if we take random dot shuffle, if we shuffle the L, uh, what happens is that uh, if I look at L, it's shuffled now. And then when it's shuffled, you can join the L. It gives you the shuffled version. Okay, So that's what the word shuffle game will be about. So it's going to shuffle the word and ask you to, to find the word. And then uh, what I want to do is uh, de define meaning. Uh, and so what, what this would do is uh, it, it prints the meaning. Okay. So, uh, and the thing is, I, I can just put this printing part into the program but uh, again uh, it's easier to just make functions as building blocks and then uh, put them all together to uh, make a big program okay so as programs get get more complicated you end up writing more and more functions that's that makes it easier to see the structure of the program okay so uh, the meaning does this. Uh, it takes some uh, list of meaning, list M, or M list. I'll say M list for the meaning list. And uh, here's a new way to do a for loop for I comma item in 
enumerate M list. Okay, so this should really be a single line. So what this what this enumerate does is it takes each of the meaning in in this M list and numbers them. Okay, it gives you zero, one, two, and so on, so on, so on. Okay, so when you want to go through each element in the list but also tag numbers to it uh, this is a nice way to do a for loop okay and then uh, I'm going to do print I plus one comma item okay so let's run this and let me show you what the meaning does so uh, remember the vocab of weary is already there, right? And if I do a meaning of vocab of weary, then it nicely, rather than having these separately, it gives you one, it gives you all the meanings, right? Uh, so that's what this function does, right? Pretty neat, right? Okay. Now I'm going to be able to now write how to present a, a word. So define present a word. And what I want to do is I want to put the two two previous functions together. So you can have a function that uses other functions. So here's what I'm going to do. I first want to print the shuffle of the word. So a word that's picked is shuffled. And then uh, meaning of the vocab vocab of the word is called upon so that the meaning of the word is given. Okay. So let's run this. And now we have a very nice function which if the word is in the dictionary, the vocabulary, then when you do present weary, uh, it gives you the shuffled version of that and it gives you the meaning. All right, so this actually is a major part of the program because uh, what you're doing now is just pick a random word and then present the shuffle present the, the meaning of it and then uh, you have to guess okay all right so uh, since the hardest parts are over now let's try to write the program which is uh, it's a breeze now because we, we actually figured out the hardest parts okay all right so now let's start to write the main part of the program. First, we are going to say score equals to zero. And we're going to keep score. And uh, print, I'm going to put backslash n, backslash n to, to have new lines. And often this is a nice thing because uh, you want to have some space before you present the uh, title. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do slow print. And it's going to be word shuffle game. Okay. Then copy this line. Okay. And put, it, put it like this. Okay. So usually you uh, press shift and cursor to copy an entire, uh, select something. Then you can do Control C or Command C to copy, and then if you do Control V or Command V, then you end up with pasting it. Okay, so that's a shortcut to uh, copy something fast and put it in the next one. Okay, and let's see what it does. Okay. Oh, nice, right? So Lord Shuffle game is shown. I think it's a little bit too slow. Uh, 
so let's try to speed it up. Uh, I don't like this uh, time that saved 0 0.2. Maybe put 0 0.02. Could be. Okay, let's run it. See what it does. Okay, you know, uh, it's a little bit fast, but uh, when you play it over and over again, maybe having this presented too slow might make the game boring. So I like 0 0.02, but you can change this to other values. Uh, if you increase the number, it will become slower. If you decrease the number, then it will become faster, okay? All right, so uh, now let's continue. Uh, let's first give some instructions. So you will be presented with a shuffled word and uh, you will be asked to guess the word. Okay. Uh, then slow print each correct answer will give you two points. Alright. But then I play this game, but it's often too hard, so I'm going to do something called hint. Okay, so slow print. Uh, uh, you can also type quotation H I T to get the first letter uh, at the expense of one point. Okay, so. If you answer something with the hint, then uh, it will tell you the the first letter only, but you don't get two points, but you only get one point if you answer correctly, okay? And then again, let's uh, copy this print and end. I'm going to put shift and then press end to get the entire line. Control C, Control V. And this is the introduction, okay? So let's run it. Okay, perfect, right? So now that everything's done, here's the main part of the game. Uh, for repetition in range five. And what it does is it's just going to re repeat the game five times so that the maximum point you can get is 10 points. And you can change this to other numbers if you want. But I think 5 is good enough. OK. Uh, print f. Uh, we're going to do a formatted string. Question. And then rep plus 1. So it's like question 1. OK. And. Uh, I have to select the word and it will be a word equals to random dot choice of words. From the words we choose one word and then we're going to present the word and see with just one single function we've done a lot because it, it will present the word and its meaning and all that so it's nice right and that points that we're going to be adding will be two, two points if you get this right. And we're going to put answer, we input uh, your guess column. Right? So we're going to get a guess. And now several things. So if answer is equal to hint, then we have to ask again, okay? So uh, print uh, hint the first letter is and then plus word zero. Okay, so, so see what I'm doing here. Hint the first letter is plus word zero. 
Now, word zero is the first letter of the word, right? So uh, print hint, the first letter is word zero. It gives you the first letter. And then uh, the points will now be adjusted to one only. You only get one point because you, you use the hint, OK? And then uh, answer will now be input. Your guess again. So you're, uh, it's asking for the guess again. And if answer is equal to the word, then you guessed it correctly, right? So print that is correct. Okay. And then you know. Maybe I want some of these to be slow print. Like maybe this one I might want to put slow print. And then uh, and what you do is you, know, you want to add the score plus equals the points. And then else print sorry. The word was space and then the word. Okay. And then we do uh, slow print formatted string current score would be score. I don't know what it was. It, is with the replet, uh, but after this, it, it has this problem of having double quotes. But make sure you delete one of the quotes, okay? And we're going to have the slow print of the current score. And then uh, let's print backslash n, backslash n, because then you get the next one, okay? And then uh, after everything is done, let's do a slow print of game over and we should show you the score right so we're going to print f you scored score points okay good and that's it so let's actually get to play this run it okay so the first question is uh, E L I C D N E change towards something smaller uh, grow worse oh decline all right question two uh, in Lorc get proud of I don't know let's let's look for a hint hint the first letter is oh uh, congratulate right uh, let's see made versus constructed uh, hardships rogue it I can't figure out again hint s stradi stardi all right um, financial assistance in the time of need uh, be beneficial for I think this is too hard hint First letter is B. Uh, benefit. Yeah. Okay. Ah, solo. Okay, so uh, we I scored seven points. All right. So that's how you play this game. And you know, if you want something really hard, then you can change this into vocab easy to vocab hard. Uh, 
the, the vocab hard is really hard. Um, actually, what I did was I took the SAT words and put it in here. Whereas the vocab easy was uh, fourth graders and fifth graders vocabulary. So that's why it was easy. Let's try the vocab hard. Uh, okay. Uh, I have no idea. E. I don't know. Uh, erudite. Erudite. Okay. Uh, Recipe. Happy. Declare. Uh, uh, can't. B. B. I don't know. I give up. Beatify. All right. I uh, could have done that one. Hint. D. Uh, demagogue. Ah, Demaga. Ah, okay. I, I still have zero. Oh, no. Um, people, uh, pitch a tent. Uh, living quarters. Uh, hint. B. B. I give up. I don't know what that word is. Okay. Last one. I might end up with zero. Uh, no, I don't know. P. Pray. I give up. Penetrate. Okay. All right. So I score zero points. You know, uh, try this and and not only do it, but uh, tell me your score as well. Okay. All right. I think I spent a lot more time than usual. Uh, hopefully, this wasn't too much. And uh, I hope to see you in lesson six. Bye.